Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from My Progression and this video is about saying no. Sometimes we need to say no, but is it always the best word to use when dealing with children and young people? The word no literally means a negative answer or decision or a word used to give a negative response. This video will look at the theory behind using positive language and alternative suggestions. Why do we say no? I have a two year old, so the word no is very common in my house, mostly coming out of my child's mouth when I ask her to brush her teeth or go to bed. But it's also one I find myself using more than I would like to. Sometimes it's because she's about to grab something she's not supposed to, or ask me for ice cream for breakfast. There are many benefits to using the word no. It's a quick, to the point, easy word to use. There's no room for misunderstanding. We all know that no means no. Sometimes it's actually an automatic, almost knee-jerk reaction. I've heard that a lot of people diagnosed with ADHD will actually use an automatic no as a coping response. So not to add something else to the pile of things they're already thinking about. Even if it's a suggestion to go and do something they like, they may find it easier to just say no. No can be used in many different ways, sarcastic, defensive, aggressively, and cheekily. Regardless of how it's used, it is a negative word. I'm in no way suggesting that you never use the word no, but by saying no, without actually saying no, it can make the use of the word more effective. I personally feel bad when I have to say no to something after 10 in a row for various different reasons. I definitely feel like a killjoy. How do children feel when you say no? As children develop and grow, they're learning how to find their power and control. If they're consistently hearing the word no, they're losing that power. This is likely to cause some kind of reaction, which could be to feel upset or to act out. No isn't just about stopping a child from doing something. It's also used in the classroom when students get answers wrong. Put yourself in the shoes of the pupils for just a second. Do you remember how hard it was to actually put your hand up and answer a question in class? Do you remember how hard it was when you were wrong? It made you feel self-conscious and embarrassed, didn't it? Whilst we need to correct our students and let them know when they're wrong, our aim as educators is to build confidence and self-belief alongside learning. In order to do that, our classroom management must nurture and support children. The word no is often necessary, but there are other ways to ensure that we're promoting the learner's self-esteem so we have an interactive classroom environment where children feel safe to have a go. What can you do instead of saying no? There are many different strategies you can implement instead of just saying no to a wrong answer. You could try, remember when we did this last week, look back in your books to help, and then we'll do some together. Prompt the children and give them ideas to support. You are there to build confidence so don't be scared to reteach. You can involve the children in this by modeling what is causing the stumbling block to the issue. Remember that if one child is getting something wrong, the chances are that at least 10 more may be struggling too. It's always worth recapping. This is hard, isn't it? I had to think twice about this myself. Getting something wrong in front of your peers could be demoralizing for many, so showing support for the learner that the question was hard takes away the pain of being wrong. I love that you always have a go, or you always impress me with your ideas. Praise for the child who tries to answer will not only encourage them, but it will encourage others to participate too. The classroom needs to be a safe place to support and nurture growing confidence. You're nearly there. Can you expand or can anyone else help? Nurture and encourage. 
Children are often on track, but need some encouragement to explore their ideas. Involve others and make it into a discussion. Give yourself a few minutes and chat to the people next to you about this. Are you all in agreement or can you come up with a different answer? Get the whole class involved. You haven't said, no, you're wrong, but by what you have said, you're giving the whole class time to work in groups and come up with a different answer. I can see why you thought that, but it wasn't what I was thinking. Then ask another question to lead the child to the correct answer. Set the child up to feel successful Remember that sometimes our questions can be misleading too, and we may need to have to rephrase what we've said for a clearer understanding. Thank you so much for having a go. A thank you is always appreciated and makes a child feel valued. It will also promote a safe classroom environment for others to have a go too. Sometimes no is necessary, but think really carefully about the reaction to this negative word. Is there an alternative which is gonna benefit both learner and learning? We would love to hear strategies that you've used in your classroom that have worked. Pop them in the comments below. And whilst you're there, like and subscribe to keep seeing more from my progression. What about when a child is doing something they shouldn't, like running in the corridor or shouting? If you say, no running in the corridor. The words that are left with the children are running in the corridor. Whereas if you say, we walk in the corridor, you're leaving them with walk in the corridor. I know this sounds strange, but there is a theory behind it. As humans, we're hardwired to listen to the sentence structure, but we often miss the first word. We sometimes hear the first part of a sentence, almost always hear the last part, but rarely hear the middle unless we have our complete attention on the person talking to us. And really, what young person is giving us their undivided attention at all times? This is why with a short sentence like no running, where there isn't really a middle, they just remember running and they're likely to do it again. It's also important for us to give the child clear instructions. So instead of no running in the corridor, you need to walk in the corridor is more clear and positive. There are many alternatives to not doing something. You can't expect them to know which one you want them to choose. You need to do the journey for them. Help them understand what you want by leaving them with the language that specifies the behavior you want to see. Verbal intervention is a huge topic and we'll cover that in more detail in some upcoming videos. What if you have to say no? It's fine. As I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes no is the best option and unavoidable. You may have a child being disruptive and asking relentless questions, all of which are designed to get a negative response. You might have tried positive language strategies, but now it's time to use no. Be clear. Make your response definitive. Say, no, you can't do that today. Or, no, we aren't having lessons outside. Say it in a firm, authoritative manner to show that you really mean business. Explain why. A short explanation about why you're saying no can turn your refusal into a learning experience. Saying, no, we're not watching a video today because we have some exciting activities to do I know you're really going to enjoy. Don't back down. Changing your no to a yes will only reinforce to your class that you don't really mean what you say. Follow through. If you have a disruptive child, you may follow this no with a consequence. This should follow whatever policy the school has in place for poor behaviour. This should show your students that when you do use no, that's that. If it's overused, it can become white noise and they're less likely to engage with the word itself. When it's well-timed, clear and attached to a consequence, it's a powerful tool. Positive language will allow for a positive environment where young people will feel able to explore new concepts and develop. Setting clear boundaries and using well thought out sentences 
will enable you to keep control and keep them engaged. Sometimes though, you do just need to say no. I've been Natalie from My Progression, and if you've enjoyed this video on saying no, then please like and subscribe to keep seeing more from My Progression. And let's keep your career in motion. <laughs>